now for part two of chapter six, James Boswell, his book. But Boswell's life is chiefly interesting were it impinges upon that of his great friend. A few months after the famous meeting in Davy's bookshop, he started for the continent, and with the idea, following the fashion of the time, of studying law at Utrecht, Johnson accompanying him on his way as far as Harwich. After a short time at the university, during which he could have learned nothing, he found himself wandering about Europe in search of celebrities, big game, the hunting of which was to be the chief interest of his life. He succeeded in bagging Voltaire and Rousseau. There was none bigger, and after a short stay in Rome, he, re he turned north, sailing from Leghorn to Corsica, where he met Pallory and the Patriot, and finally returned home, escorting Teresa Levisser, uh, Rousseau's mistress, as far as London. Hume, at this time, speaks of him as a friend of mine, very good-humoured, very agreeable, and very mad. Meanwhile, his father, Lord Aikenbeck, who had been uh, had been born with admirable patience, such stories as had reached him of his son's wild ways, instead that it was time, uh, in insisted that it was time for him to be settled down, but Boswell was too full of his adventures in the island of Corsica and his meeting with Paloi to begin drudgery at the law. His accounts of his travels made him a welcome guest at London dinner parties, and he had finally decided to write a book of his experiences. At last, the father, by a threat of cut of supplies, secured his son's return, but his desire to publish the book had not abated, and when he finally was admitted to the Scottish bar, he, uh, we find him corresponding with his friend Mr. Dilly, the publisher, in regard to the book. Uh, with which he was busily employed from an unpublished letter which i was fortunate enough to secure quite recently from a bookseller in new york in new york gabriel wells we may follow boswell on his negotiations the uh, letter is dated edinburgh 6th of august 8 1767 sir i have received your letter agreeing to pay me 100 guineas for the copyright of my account of corsica etc. The memory to the money to be uh, due three months after the publication of the work in London, and also agreeing that the first edition shall be printed in Scotland under my direction and a map of Corsica be engraved for the work at your expense. In return, which I do hereby agree with that you shall have the sole property of the said work, our bargain uh, therefore is now concluded, and I hardly wish that it may be of advantage advantage to you. I am, sir, your most humble servant, James Boswell. Through the kindness of my fellow collector and generous friend, Judge Pattison of Philadelphia, I own an interesting fragment of a brief in Boswell's hand, written at about this period. It appears therefrom that Boswell had been retained in to secure the return of a of a stocking frame of the value of a few shillings, which has been forcibly carried off. The outcome of the litigation is not known, but the paper bears the interesting endorsement. This was the first paper drawn by me as an advocate, James Boswell. But I am allowing my collector's passion to carry me uh, too far afield. The preface of Boswell's account of Corsica closes with an interesting bit of self-revelation. He says characteristically, For my part, I should be proud to be known as an author. I have an ardent ambition for literary fame. For all possessions, I should imagine literary fame to be the most valuable. A man who has been able to furnish, to furnish a book which has been approved by the world has established himself as a respectable character in distant society without any danger of having that character uh, lessened by the observation of his weaknesses. To persevere a uniform dignity among those who see us every day is hardly possible, and to aim at it must put us under the uh, fetters of a perpetual restraint. The author of an approved book may allow his natural disposition uh, and may allow his natural disposition an easy play, and yet indulge 
the pride of superior genius when he considers that by those who knew him only as an author he never ceases to be respected such an author in his hours of gloom and discontent may have the consolation of uh, to think that he that his writings are that are at that very time giving pleasure to numbers and such an author may cherish the hope of being remembered after death which has been a great object of the noblest minds in all ages a brief uh, contemporary criticism sums up the merits of Corsica in a paragraph Quote, there is a deal about the island and its dimensions that one doesn't care to a straw about, but that part which relates to Pali is amusing and interesting. The author has a rage for knowing uh, anybody that has ever talked of, that was ever talked of. Boswell thought uh, that he was the first and he proved to be the second Englishman. The first was an English woman who had ever set foot on the island. He received Pali and his accounts of his receptions by the great patriot and his conversation with uh, the people are amusing in the, in the extreme. To his great satisfaction, it was generally believed that he was, he was on a public mission. The more I disclaimed any such thing, the more they preserved in affirming it, and I was considered as a very close young man. I therefore just allowed them to make me minister of uh, minister of me till time should un, uh, should uh, undeceive them the ambassador inglesi as the good peasants and soldiers used to call me became a great favorite among them i got a corsican dress made in which i would i walked about with an air of true satisfaction on another occasion when i rode out i was mounted on pallies on own horse and rich furniture of crimson and velvet and broad gold lace and had my guard marching along with me i allowed myself to indulge a momentary pride in this parade as i was curious to experience what should really be the pleasure of state and distinction in which mankind are so strangely intoxicated the successes of this publication the success of this publication led boswell into absurd extravagances which he thought were necessary to support his position as a distinguished English author. Praise for his work he skillfully uh, extracted from most of his friends, but Johnson proved obdurate. He had expressed a qualified approval of the book when it appeared, but when Boswell, in a letter, sought more than this, the old doctor charged him with uh, t- to empty his head of Corsica, which he said thought, which which he said he thought had filled it rather too long. (coughs) Boswell wrote at least uh, two of what we should uh, today call press notices of himself. One is reminded of the story of the man in a higher dress suit at a chief's ball, at a charity ball, rushing about inquiring the whereabouts of the man who puts your name in the paper. To such a one, Boswell presented this brief account of himself on the occasion of the famous Shakespeare Jubilee. One of the most remarkable masks upon this occasion was James Boswell, Esquire, in the dress of an honor, uh, an armed Corsican chief. He entered the amphitheater about 12 o'clock. He wore a short, dark colored coat of coarse cloth, scarlet waistcoats and breeches, and black spatter dashes. His cap or bonnet was a black cloth on the front of it was embroidered in gold letters, Viva la Liberté. And on one side of it was a handsome blue feather and cockade, so that it had an elegant as well as warlike appearance. On the breast of his coat was sewed a moor's head, a crest of Corsica, surrounded with the branches of a laurel. He had also a cartridge pouch into which was stuck a stiletto, and on his left side a pistol was hung upon the belt of his cartridge pouch. He had a uh, fusée slung across his shoulder, where no powder, and wore no powder in his hair, but had it plated in full length uh, with a knot of blue ribbon at the end of it. He had, by way of staff, a very curious vine, all of one piece. 
with a bird finely crafted upon it emblematic, em, emblematically of the sweet bar, bard of Avon. He wore no mask, saying that it was not proper for a gallant Cors Corsican. So soon as he came into the room, he drew universal attention. The novelty of the Corsican dress is becoming is its becoming appearance and the character of that brave nation occurred to distinguish the armed Corsican chief. May we not suppose that several bottles of old hawk contributed to his enjoyment of this occasion. Here is the other one. Boswell the author is a most excellent man. He is of an ancient family in the west of Scotland, upon which he values himself not a little. At his nativity there appeared omens of his future greatness. His parts are bright and his education has been good. He has traveled in post chases miles without number. He is fond of seeing such of the, uh, much of the world. He eats of every good dish, especially apple pie. He drinks old hawk. He has a very fine temper. He is somewhat of a humorist and a little tinctured with pride. He has a good manly countenance and his own and he owns himself to be amorous. He has infinite vivacity, yet it is observed at times to have a melancholy cast. He is rather fat than lean, rather short than tall, rather young than old. His shoes are neatly made, and he never wears spectacles. The success of Corsica has, uh, was not very great, but it sufficed to uh, turn Boswell's head completely. He spent as much time in London as he could contrive to, and led there the life of a dissipated man of fashion. He quarreled with his father, and after a series of escapades with women of the town and love affairs with heiresses, he finally married his cousin, Margaret uh, Montgomery, a girl without a fortune. Much to Boswell's disgust, his father, on the very same day, married for the second time and married his cousin. For a time after marriage, he seemed to take his profession seriously, but he de deceived neither his father nor his clients. The old man said that Jamie is simply taking a toot on a new horn. Meanwhile, Boswell never allowed his interest in Johnson to cool for the moment. When he was in London and he went there uh, on one excuse or another, as often as his means permitted, he was much with Johnson, and when he was at home, he was constantly worrying Johnson for uh, some evidence of the affection for him. Finally, Johnson writes, My regard for you is greater almost than I have words to express this from the maker of a dictionary, but I do not choose to be always repeating it. Write it down in the first leaf of your pocketbook and never doubt of it again. Neither wife nor father could understand the feeling of reverence and affection which their Jamie had for Johnson. I always delight in the story of his father saying to an old friend, quote, There's a nay hope for Jamie. Mon, Jamie is gone clean git. What do you think, Mon? He's done with Polly. He's off with a landlopping scoundrel of a course again. And whose tail do you think he has pinned himself to now, Mon? A domini man, an odd domini. He kept a, sc a school, and he can't, he called it an academy. Mrs. Boswell, a sensible, cold, rather shadowy person, saw but little of Johnson and was satisfied that it could be so. There is one good story, and to her credit, unaccustomed to the ways of genius, she caught Johnson, uh, who was nearsighted one evening, burnishing a lighted candle on her carpet to make it burn more brightly and remarked i have seen many a bear led by a man but never before have i seen a man led by a bear boswell was just a fellow to appreciate this and promptly repeated to johnson who failed to see the humor of it in 1782 his father died and he came into the estate but by this improvident management he soon found himself in financial difficulties. Johnson's death two years later removed a restraining influence and he much that he much needed. He tried to practice law, but he was unsuccessful. 
never an abstainious man, he now drank heavily and constantly, and is constantly resolved to turn over a new leaf. Shortly after Johnson's death, Boswell published uh, his journal, The Tour of the Hebrides, which reached the third edition within the year and established his reputation as a writer of a new kind, in which anecdotes and conversations are woven into narrative and a fidelity and skill which were so easily to him that they were impossible to others. The great success of this book encouraged him to begin and continue to work upon the great biography of Johnson, which his fame so securely rests. Others had published before him Mrs. Pos uh, Posey's anecdotes of the late Samuel Johnson had sold well, and Hawkins, the unclutchable knight, uh, as Johnson called him, had been cons uh, commissioned by the booksellers of London to write a formal biography which appeared in 1787. While the lesser publications there were seemingly no end, nevertheless Boswell preserved and wrote his friend Temple that his mode of biography, which gives not only a history of Johnson's visible progress through the world and of his publication, uh, but in the view of his mind in his letters and conversation, is the most perfect that can be conceived and will be more of a life than any work that has yet proved, yet appeared. He had been preparing for the task for uh, for more than twenty years. He had uh, he had in season and out, in he had in season and out been taking notes of Johnson's conversations, and Johnson himself had supplied him with much of the material. This is thus in poverty, in, interrupted by periods of dis. Uh, dissipation amid the sneers of many, he continued his work. While it was in progress, his wife died. He and he, poor fellow, justly abraded himself for the neglect of her. Neglect of her. Meanwhile, I knew. Meanwhile, a new horn was presented to him. He had or thought he had a chance of being elected in Parliament, or at least of securing a place under gov under government. But all. But in all this, he was destined to be disappointed. It would be difficult to imagine conditions more unfavorable or unsuited eff un uh, to sustained effort than those under which Boswell la labored. He was desperately hard up, always subject to fits of the blues, which amounted almost to melancholia. He may at time, he many a time thought of giving up the task uh, from which he hoped to derive fame and profit. He considered selling his rights in the publications for a thousand pounds, but it would get to his heart, he said, to accept such a sum. And again, I am in such bad spirits that I have fear concerning it. I may get no profit, may, may lose. The public may be disappointed and think I have done it poorly. I may make enemies and even have quarrels. Then the depression would pass and he could write, it will be, without exception, the most entertaining book you have ever read. When his friends heard that the life would make two large volumes quarto, and that the price was two guineas, they shook their heads, and Boswell's fears began again. At last, on May 16, 1791, the book appeared, with the imprint of Charles Dilly in the poultry, and so successful was it that by August 1,200 copies had been disposed of and the entire edition was exhausted before the end of the year. The writer confesses to such a possession for his book that of this edition he owns at present for copies in various uh, states, the one he praises most having an inscription in Boswell's hands to James Boswell, Esquire, Jr., from the affectionate father of the author. Of other editions, but only why display one's weaknesses? Should there, in Boswell's phrase, be any cold-blooded and uh, morose mortals who really dislike it? I am sorry for them. To me, it is. it has for 30 years been a never-ending source of profit and pleasure, which is, in, is as important. It is a book to ramble in with uh, and with. I have never, I think, read it through from cover to cover, as the saying is, but, with, uh, but someday I will. Meanwhile, let me take... At confession, there are parts of it which are deadly dull. The judicious reader will skip those without hint from me. I have indeed always had a certain sympathy with George Henry Luce that 
who for years threatened to publish an abridgment of it, he could, it, it could be done indeed. The work could be either expanded or contracted at will, but every good Boswellian will wish it uh, to do this for himself. Tempering with the classic is something like tampering with a will. It is good form not to do. Uh, what is really needed is to a complete index to the sayings of Johnson, his dicta spoken or written. It would be a her heroic task, but heroic tasks are substantial, constantly being undertaken. My friend Osgood of Princeton, a ripe scholar and an ardent Johnsonian, has been devoting his scanty leisure of years to the concordance of Spencer. No one less competent than he should undertake to survive such a labor of love. It would be remembered that the Bible is not lacking in quotations, nor is Shakespeare, but these sources of wisdom aside, Boswell, quoting Johnson, supplies us more frequently with quotations than any other author whatever. Could the irascible old doctor come to earth again, and with that wonderful memory of his call to mind the poorly casual remarks which he chanced to make to Boswell, he would surely be amazed to hear himself quoted and to learn that his overdicta had become fixed in the minds of countless thousands who perhaps have never heard of heard his name. I chanced the other day to stop at my uh, broker's office to see how much I had lost in an unexpected drop in the market, and to beguile the time, picked up a market letter uh, in which the sentence met my eye. The unexpected and perpendicular decline in the stock of goldenrod mining shares has left many investors sadder, if not wiser. When will the public learn that investors and securities of this class are only indulging themselves in providing the correctness of Franklin's adage, and that the expectation of making a profit in such securities is simply the triumph of hope over experience? Good Boswellians will hardly need to be reminded that this is Dr. Johnson on marriage. He had something equally wise to say, too, on the subject of the shares, but in the instance he was speaking of man's second venture into matrimony, his first having proved very unhappy. Most men, when they write a book of memoirs in which hundreds of living people are mentioned, discreetly postpone publication until until after uh, they and the chief personages of the narrator are dead. Johnson refers to Bolingbroke as a cowardly scoundrel, a cowardly scoundrel, for writing a book, charging a blunderbuss, he called it, and leaving half a crown to a beggarly Scotsman to pull the trigger after his death. Boswell spent some years in charging his own uh, blunderbuss, but he filled it with shot, great and small, and then, taking careful aim, pulled the trigger. Cries of rage, anguish, and delight instantly arose from all over the kingdom. A vast number of living people were mentioned, and their merits or fallings discussed with an abandon which is one of the greatest charms of the book today, but which, when it appeared, stirred up a veritable hornet's nest. As, as some one very cleverly said, Boswell has invented a new kind of libel. A man who is dead once told me so and so, and redress here you have in law none. The only thing to do is to punch his head. Fortunately, Boswell escaped personal chastisement, but he made many enemies and alienated some friends. Mrs. Thrall, by this time Mrs. Posey, quite naturally uh, felt enraged at Boswell's contemptuous remarks about her and his reflections to what Johnson said of her while he was enjoying the hospitality of Stretham. The the best of us like to criticize our friends behind their backs, and Johnson Johnson should be could be frank and indeed brutal on occasion. Mrs uh, Boscovin, his wife of the wife of the Admiral, on the other hand, had no reason to be displeased when she said, It is not posthum uh, presumptuous in me to praise her. I would say that her manners are the best of any lady with whom I have ever had happiness to be in, to be acquainted. Bishop Percy 
shrewdly suspecting that Boswell's judgment was not to be trusted when he complaint compiled with his request for some material from life desired that his name uh, might be mentioned in the work to which Boswell replied that it was uh, this intention to introduce as many names of eminent persons that he uh, as he could adding believe me my lord you are not the only bishop to grace my pages we may suspect that he like many another look up the book with fear and trembling and put it down in rage Wilkes too got a touch of tar but little uh, he cared the best beloved and the best hated man in England he probably laughed improperly thinking that Boswell could do no damage to his reputation but what shall we say of Lady Diana uh, Bowclark's feelings when she read the, the stout old English epithet which Johnson had applied to her. Johnson's authorized biographer, Sir John Hawkins, dead and buried without his shoes and, self, and stockings, as the old jingle goes, and sneered at Boswell and passed on. Verily, he hath his reward. Boswell accused him of stupidity, uh, inaccuracy, and in writing uh, fatiguing and disgusting rigmarole. His daughter came to the rescue of his fame in Boswell, and she had a lively exchange of letters. Indeed, Boswell at all times seemed to court that which most men shrink from, a discussion of questions of veracity with a woman. But on the whole, the book was well received, and over his successes Boswell excluded exalted Boswell exalted as well as he might he had achieved his ambition he had written the name among the mortals with its publication his work was done he became more and more dissipated his sober hours he devoted to schemes of self-reform and a revision of the text for future editions he was engaged in a third printing when death overtook him the last words he wrote, the unfinished letter to his old friend Temple, have already been quoted. The pen which he laid down was taken up by his son, who finished the letter. From him we learned the sad details of his death. He passed away on May 19, 1795, in his 55th year. Like many other men, Boswell uh, was always intending to reform and never did. His practice was over at total variance with his principles. In opinions, he was a moralist, and in conduct, he was otherwise. Let it be remembered, however, that it was of a generous, open-hearted, and loving disposition. A cause, it, a cause in his will, written in his own hand, sheds important light on his character. I do beseech succeeding heirs of of entail to be kind to the tenants and not to turn out the old possessors of a great little more rent. What were the contemporary opinions of Boswell? Walpole did not like him, but Walpole liked few. Halloway and his friend with Goldsmith and Garrick, he had been intimate. Mrs. Thrall and he did not get along well together. He could not bear the thought that she was more of Johnson than he and he was jealous of her influence over him. Fanny Burney did not like him and declined to give him some information which he very naturally wanted for his book because she wanted to use it herself. Gibbon thought him terribly indiscreet, which compared with Gibbon, he certainly was. Reynolds and he were f firm friends. The great book is dedicated to Sir Joshua. Of Boswell, Johnson wrote during their journey in, in Scotland, there is no house where he is not received with kindness and respect and elsewhere he never left the house without leaving a wish for his return also he was a man who finds himself welcome wherever he goes and makes himself faster uh, than he can without them and he was the best traveling companion in the world if there is a greater test than this i do not know it is, uh, it is summering and wintering with a man in a month. Burke said to him, Burke said of him, 
uh, that good humor has no nature natural. Good humor was so natural to him as to be scarcely a yeah, virtue to him. I know many admirable men of whom this cannot be said. Several years ago, being in Ayrshire, I find myself not, not of far from Ankenlech, and although I knew that Boswell's greatest editor, Burbeck Hill, had experienced a uh, rebuff upon his attempt to visit the old estate that Johnson had described as very magnificent and very convenient, I, I determined out of loyalty to James Boswell to make an attempt. I thought that perhaps American nerve would succeed where English scholarship had failed. We had uh, spent the night in air, and early next morning I inquired the cost of a motor trip to take my small party over to Achenland, and I was careful, careful to pronounce the word as, as though spelled Affleck. His Boswell, as Boswell tells us, so. To where, sir? Affleck, I repeated. And the man uh, seemed dazed. Finally, I spelled it out to him. A-U-C-H-I-N-L-E-C-K. Ah, sir, Achenlech. It, in gutturals and types, will not reproduce and would be too guinea, sir. Very good, I said. Uh, pronounce it, uh, pronounce it your way. And let me have the motor. We were soon rolling over a road which Boswell uh, must have taken many times, and certainly never so rapidly so or luxuriously. How Doctor Johnson could have enjoyed the journey, I recalled his remark, "Sir, if I had no duties and no reference to futility, I would spend my life driving briskly in a post chaise with a pretty woman." Futurity was not bothering me, and I had a pretty woman, my wife, by my side. Moreover, to complete the doctor's remark, she was one who could understand me and add something to the conversation. We set out in high spirits. As we approached the house by a fine avenue, bordered by venerable trees, no doubt those planted by uh, the old Baird who delighted in such work, my courage almost failed me, but I had gone too far to retire. To the servant who responded to my ring, I stated my business, which seemed trivial enough. I might be as well. I might as well have addressed a graven image. At, le at last, he spoke. The family is our way. The instructions are that no one is to be admitted to the house under pain of instant dismissal. Means elsewhere successful failed to be here. You can walk in the park, thanks, but I did not come to Scotland to walk in a park. Perhaps you can direct me to the church where Boswell is buried. You will find the tomb in the kirk in the village. Coal has been discovered on the estate, and the village a mile, a mile or two away is ugly, and to judge from the number of places where beer and spirits could be had, their consumption would seem to be the chief occupation of the population. I found the kirk and the door securely locked. Would I try for the key at the minister's? I would, but the minister was away for the day. Would I try the sexton? I would, but he too was away, and I found myself in the midst of a crowd of barefooted children with embarrassed me by the profitless attentions. It was cold, and it began to rain. I remembered that we were not far from Greenock, where where when it does not rain it snows my visit had not been a success i cannot recommend a boswell pilgrimage i wished that i was in london and bethought me of johnson's remark that the noblest prospect in scotland is the high ground or high road that leads to england on the high road my party made no objection to setting out i once hired I once heard an eminent college professor speaking disparaging of Boswell's life of Johnson, saying that it was a mere literary slop pail into which Boswell dropped scraps of all kind, gossip, anecdotes, and scandal, literary and biographical refuse generally. It stood aghast for a moment, then my commercial instinct awakened. I endeavored to secure this nugget of criticism in writing, with permission to publish it over the author's name. In vain, I offered a 
rates per word that would have aroused the envy of a of a Kipling. My friend pleaded writer's cramp or made some other excuse that I and found and it finally appeared that after all this was only one of the causes where I had neglected in Boswell's phrase to distinguish between talk for the sake of victory and talk with the desire to inform and illustrate. Again, this opinion, there is a perfect chorus of praise rendered by a full choir. Uh, the great scholar Jowett confessed that he had read the book 50 times. Carlyle said Boswell had given more pleasure than any other man of his time, and perhaps two or three expect, accepted has done the world's greater service. Lowell refers to the life as a perfect granary of discussion and conversation. Leslie Stevens said that his fondness for reading began and would end with Boswell's Life of Johnson. Robert, Stu Stevenson, Robert Louis Stevenson wrote, I am taking a little of Boswell daily by way of a Bible. I mean to read him now until the day I die. It is one of the few classics which is not merely talked about and taken as read but is constantly being read, and I love to think that perhaps not a day goes by when someone, somewhere, does not open the book for the first time and become a confirmed Boswellian. Quote, what a wonderful thing your English literature is, end quote, a learned Hungarian once said to me. Quote, you have the greatest drama, you have the greatest poetry, and the greatest fiction in the world, and you are the only nation that has any biography, end quote. The great English epic is Boswell's Life of Johnson. And there ends chapter six of the amenities of book collecting. We'll be back with chapter seven called A Light Blue Stocking. And I will see you next time, Booktube.